What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast powered by Anna Jar and Levine. Hope you had a great weekend. It was a very eventful weekend for the Canes. Big scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, multiple VIPs who attended that scrimmage posted their reports on canesinsight.com's free forum. Sign up today. And you know, these are all different people who went to practice, but they had a consistent story. The star of the practice, just like the star of the spring, Elijah Lofton, true freshman from Las Vegas. Was he running back, tight end, H back, wide receiver, whatever you want to call him? He played running back on Saturday, according to reports, but just an absolute star of the scrimmage, multiple touchdowns, according to those reports, and just looked like a stud on that first team. We're going to compare him to the star of last spring, somebody who took that spring success and carried it on into the ACC, and that is someone by the name of Ruben Bain. We're going to walk through some of the similarities between them. Uh, we're also going to talk to Jacoby George, who had an unbelievable season last year for the Canes, number three receiver in the country, Canes Connection athlete. Great interview with him. First, I want to talk about my friends at Anjar and Levine Accident Attorneys. They're not breakout stars like Elijah Lofton. They're proven commodities. If you get an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. Someone you care about gets an accident. Same thing. Deal with the pros. Deal with proven commodities who know the whole process, soup to nuts, know the state. You don't want to deal with rookies. You want vets. Anna Jarn Levine, 1 800 747 free, 1 800 747 3733. Take back control of your life with the proven commodities at Anna Jarn and Levine. In the new studio, really enjoying this, getting comfortable here. And when people comment on the new studio, one of the first things they ask is, where do you get that picture in the back? This image, as most of you know, is with Dennis Smith, Miami's head of recruiting post, when Miami's about to get a commit. We got a lot of positive associations with that image and this piece of art right here better than the Mona Lisa, man. This is on canvas and just, you can see it. It looks better up close than it does on video, but people are always asking me where it's from. It is from my man suave. He is at Instagram Kane city cartel. The link to his printify shop, his shop, his online shop is in the bio. Uh, we'll also post it on the website. Um, his line green tree, uh, green tree university, the open apparel, or sorry, open slate apparel, um, just unbelievable products like this right here. And people have been asking me, where can I get this? Link is in the bio, and there's more great stuff like this. Tell your wife, keep the artwork at home. You know, whatever she got at Bed Bath & Beyond, whatever she got at, at Michael's, throw it in the, in the garbage. Get this right above the family mantle. You'll be happy you did. With that said, let's talk about which you came here for Elijah Lofton. And we made, we named the video Elijah Lofton is the Ruben Bain of offense. Cause that's really the comp I'm going to use for him based on where he has, in, he's at in the spring. Now look, if he's really the Ruben Bain of offense, he'll be candidate for ACC rookie of the year or win it. So he hasn't done that yet. This is all just spring hype, but Ruben Bain was generating similar spring hype last spring and he translated it to the field. The closest comparison I could think of is that for Elijah Lofton based on what he's doing and his productivity. And the comparisons go deeper than, hey, the star of last spring was Ruben Bain. The star of this spring is Elijah Lofton. Ruben Bain was a four-star player who really should have been a, a five-star top 10 type player when you look at what he did production-wise in high school and then what he did production-wise in the ACC his first year. Why wasn't he a five-star player? He's not the tallest guy. He's not 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He's probably closer to 6'2". When you think edge rushers, you think 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, prototype. Why was Elijah Lofton a four-star, not a five-star? He wasn't the prototype. Tight end, you think 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He's about 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, six, so again, similar knocks on both of them. But when you look at the knocks, that's really where it ends. Because if you break down their game, yeah, they're not tall. But are they small? No. Ruben Vein, very strong, very compact, very heavy. Same thing with Elijah Lofton. 240, can probably gain a little bit of weight, but is already a monster in the weight room. Both of these guys, talk about power clean, squats, all the explosive measurements, they're off the charts. Lofton is known as a weight room beast and a very good tester, just not the tallest guy in the world. You look at their games. Can they just do one thing? No. Bain. He can beat you with the speed rush. He can beat you with the bull rush. He can beat you with the speed two power. He can bend around the edge. He has counters. He can use his hands. He's good against the run. Um, 
know, he really he can play defensive tackle. He's extremely versatile as a defensive end and extremely complete as a defensive end. He's not a one trick pony. Elijah Lofton, same thing. He can catch contested catches. He can run routes. He can run the balls. You saw in the scrimmage on Saturday where he was the star of the scrimmage. He can block, he can lead block. He can, if you needed to play defense. And we have Mario Cristobal talking about that now. Um, but really, this is somebody who is a pure football player, and it was not only reason he was not a elite five star recruit was because of his height, which sounds like someone we know. So I'm gonna go to you know a clip about from myself last signing day talking about Elijah Lofton. Maybe could be, but in terms of who's my favorite player, it would be Elijah Lofton. Saw him against Central; he was unreal. Uh, I think he scored like four touchdowns in that game, including running the ball. Um, you know, he's really, to me, just like a super fullback. Because you look at his body, he's about 6'1", 240. So he's undersized for a tight end, but for a fullback, he's perfect. Tested in the 90th percentile, weight room freak. Um, ran the ball extremely well. Again, multiple touchdowns against, against South Florida competition. And also lines up wide, has great body control runs like a receiver and then very physical blocker. He, he can, he can lead block again, that fullback projection. He can block in line. No problem. He's strong enough. Um, there's a play in, in, when you, at Bishop Gorman where it was an interception guy was running, seemed like a sure touchdown. He went back, chased him down and knocked the ball away. Just tremendous motor speed, physicality at the end, everything you want in a football player. So look, I don't replay the ones where I'm dead wrong. Uh, but certainly with Lofton, um, you know, I, I think what he was in high school is what he's doing now. We'll see when the game start, but it's not like this is somebody who should have snuck up on everybody. He was doing all these things in high school, very similar to Ruben Bain. Ruben goes in there and he's throwing around offensive tackles. He did that in high school, dominating top competition. Ruben Bain had three sacks against IMG, the best team in the nation, most talented team in the nation. So he proves he can do that in the high school level. Um, Elijah Lofton, what he did against South Florida's top teams. Bishop Gorman has a top schedule. He was doing it against everybody. Multiple touchdowns against Miami Central, where Ruben Bain went. So they proved it against top competition in high school, and they showed all of these traits in high school. They also come from programs where you get a lot of quality. Bishop Gorman, one of the top programs in the nation, where Elijah Lofton went in Las Vegas. Miami Central, where Ruben Bain went. One of the top programs in the nation. So they're coming in with that mentality, with that coaching, having gone against top competition and having dominated top competition. And look, I know there's going to be people listening to this podcast saying, Danny, you're comparing a, a guy who has not played a snap to an all ACC stud, one of the best pass rushers in the country. And yeah, look, these comparisons, they're based on projection. But if you think I'm just being a fan and being a prisoner of the moment, I will direct you to our head coach, Mario Cristobal, who made a very similar comparison after spring practice this year. You wish you had a bunch of them, you know, because the truth of the matter is I I personally think if he was a linebacker, he'd go over there right now and give everybody a run for their money. That's how much uh, faith we have in him as a freshman. And the fact, you know, he's uh comes from Bishop Gorman where, you know, it's very high standards, like a lot of the program guys that are here. And uh, he just, it, he's exceeded expectations. Um, and we've thrown a lot at him, a lot. And so um, pretty fired up about the guy. So I forgot the question completely, but it's, you know, we talked a lot about Ruben Bain last year, you know, early on and guys like that and Francis. And when you start talking about Elijah, you feel, feel a little bit the same way. So now we're talking about what he brings to the table as a player, also talking about the team first attitude and the versatility saying that he could play linebackers if he wanted to. And again, you heard what Cristobal, who he compared him to. He didn't compare him to other freshmen. He compared him to Francis Malanoa, freshman All-America, Ruben Bain, freshman All-America. So again, you can say I'm getting carried away, but the guy that's around him the most and who's not prone to hype players haven't done anything throughout that comparison. So that gives you an idea of what's happening behind closed doors at practices with Elijah Lofton. So really excited to see him. Saturday, the spring game, you will be able to see him yourself. By the way, if you notice the shirt I'm wearing, Kane's wear. Spring games on Saturday. Gear up before you head to the spring game. 
Go to the store in Davie, Arrowhead Plaza. You can get all kinds of Canes gear, whether it's Canes baseball, like the shirt I'm wearing, or other Canes jerseys, hats, posters, you name it, to get ready, tailgate gear, to get ready for the spring game on Saturday. And if you're just watching at home, canesword.com. They'll ship anywhere in the country. You can get your Canes gear um, as you get ready to watch the spring game from the comfort of your home. Also, while we're talking about the spring game, we are hosting the fifth quarter along with Canes Connection, the official NIL collective of Miami Hurricanes Athletics after the game. So right after the game at Titanic, the legendary Titanic, one of the most famous um, restaurants, bars on campus, just a classic meetup spot. We're going there right after the game. Canes Connection members will be able to get in. You got appetizers, food, drink. We're going to have the setup. We're going to be interviewing Kane's players. We're going to be going over the spring game, live streaming to everybody. Kane's Connection members, exclusive event. It's going to be awesome. If you're also a Kane's Connection member, I'm going to have a Zoom chat with some non-public information that I cannot reveal here, the ultimate insider chat for Kane's Connection members only. That should be sometime on Thursday evening, I believe is what we're aiming for. Now you'll get an email confirming it uh, shortly and we'll be posting it on social if you're a Kane's Connection member. And if you're not, sign up. 20% off your first month if you use promo code CIS. You also get access to the chat if you use promo code CIS. Be part of the solution. Let's get this program where it needs to be with everybody's contribution. And look, it doesn't happen without the support of the community. There's a new era. There's the NIL era. And do what you can to help the program by joining Kane's Connection. Speaking of Kane's Connection, we have Kane's Connection athlete Jacoby George on now. Great interview with him. He was a third leading receiver in the ACC last year, really made a huge leap. And he's hoping to, with Cam Ward, take that leap to the next level where he's an elite receiver in the country. Great chat with him. So we're going to take it to the uh, interview with Jacoby George. All right, Canes fans, very excited to be joined now on the Canes Insight Podcast by Canes Connection athlete and Miami Hurricanes wide receiver Jacoby George. Jacoby, appreciate you taking some time today to join the show again. Canes fans, this interview in partnership with Canes Connection. Go and sign up the official NIL of the University of Miami. Jacoby, man, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Appreciate y'all for having me. Yes, sir, man. So obviously going through spring ball now and coming off a great season, really a breakout year for you. And coming back senior season now, just talk to us a little bit about your growth last year both on and off the field and that breakout year we call it a breakout year we know what you had been doing in practice the years prior but you showed the nation you were one of the best receivers in the in the country one of the best receivers in the conference last year just talk a little bit about your growth as a player and you know how everything kind of came together for you last year i feel like everything kind of came together with me because of my receiver coach, Coach KB, he kind of helped me understand like how to fail and like how to like move on after you fail. So like just because you fail once don't mean you have to fail again. And just just me failing in practice just helped me doing what I had to do on the field in the games. So it was like just by failing in practice, I feel like that helped me a lot of the understanding of what I did wrong and what I need to do and what I can do to make it better for next time. So I feel like that kind of helped me a lot. So it was like my receiver coach was like, he put that in my head to where it was like, you have to fail to win. Right. And it seems like it's more than just you know, the ins and outs of the receiver position with Coach KB. It's that relationship that you guys have with him and how he's kind of able to instill that confidence in you, right? So yes. uh, just now now going back to the start of your football journey and growing up, right? I mean, was it always football? Because we're in South Florida, right? You're a South Florida guy yourself. Football is is king down here, right? Was it always that? Did you, did you play other sports growing up? I mean, talk to the Canes fans about, your youth sports journey and and kind of growing up as a football player down here it it pretty much was always football like i tried basketball once but it was back to football I hooper, huh? <laughs> yeah i won a hooper i like i started playing football when i was five and it's just been football ever since jacoby i want to ask you when you were in high school 
everybody watching your highlight reels, what you did in seven on seven, it was always the one handed catches. So <laughs> tell me about kind of how that became kind of your thing. And you realize, Hey, I can do this. And then also adjusting to the college level and knowing when and when not to go up with one hand. Yeah. You're not going to do that. Cause it's like in college and then seven on seven, seven on seven, I feel like it's more of like entertainment. So like you could just do whatever freely and college is like, it's a business. Like you gotta, you do that, try to do the one hand and you drop it. Now you just like, damn, but it's like, Hey, like you gotta catch it in college. So you can't even like try. And we've been talking about football here, you know, you off the field, what are some of the things that you're into passions, hobbies, just what, what, what can you tell us about Jacoby George off the football field? I like to play video games. What are some of your favorite video games? Uh, probably Warzone and Madden. Are you are you a streamer? I mean, is there somewhere for the, the fans to to follow you or what? Because listen, I know there's money making opportunities. <laughs> so if we could, this is all about again Kane's connection, official NIL. It's you know part of it is helping build that brand, right? So yeah, if you have anything, you you let the people know, and and hopefully they can they can see you on there. I don't stream, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start soon. Okay. And, and listen, talking about Kane's connection, right? Because you guys in today's era of college football, it's it's more than just ball, right? There's so much yes. that goes into it. Talk to us a little bit about your since you've been with Kane's connection, how they've helped you um, kind of grow your brand and and other things they've helped you with. They helped me a lot. Like they helped me financial wise. They helped me like even like with public speaking. They helped me that way. They helped me like business wise, like just interacting with other people, just teaching me how to like interact with other people, stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, when when football is over with, right? I mean, what do you see yourself doing down the line? Like, we're talking about stuff off the field, talking about some of your passions. What could you see yourself doing, uh, you know, when the uh, so, time comes? Uh. I'll probably want to be a coach, okay. if anything. Yeah, I probably want to be a coach. Okay. So, Cam Ward obviously coming in now at the quarterback position, and, not, and it's not just not just Cam Ward, right? It's a really really good QB room, right? I mean, you got five guys on scholarship in there, which is not not common mm -hmm. at at the at the college level right now, and the, the way the portal is and stuff. So to have all that talent in the room, and then talk about him coming in. And and what what you've seen from him and that connection you're building with him, Cam is like he came in ready, like already, like he came in already, like communicated with the team, like communicated receivers, like the first practice after practice we were watching film already, so it's like he's like a big role on this team mm -hmm. already, so I feel like him just being him. Is going to help us a lot. Jacoby, listen, we've seen a lot of big-time South Florida receivers go to Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, especially from Broward County. What made you pick Miami, and what does it mean to be somebody who is becoming a star at the University of Miami? I chose Miami because I wanted to stay home. I wanted to be close to my family and them be able to watch my games and be able to come to my practice every day and watch me grow as a person and as a football player. And I feel like anybody else that's from Miami or Broward should do the same. Now, Jacoby, obviously amazing season last year, as we talked about, right? Your your best season in college yet. What's that next step for you? Because now you're coming back opportunity, right? At the next level ahead of you. What's that next step for you? Um, and and it, when you talk about that, I mean, how has that focus level been for you this offseason, understanding what is ahead of you and, and what the potential is in front of you? From my understanding that it's going to be harder to because now people know who I am and know what to watch. So it's like I have to work even harder in the film room, on the field and off the field. So it's like I have to do whatever it has to take to do what I did last year or even better. You got that target on your back now. After yeah, basically. You did what you did last year, right? Yes. 
I wanted to ask you about that Florida State game, right? I mean, that was again, it was a great season, but that was kind of like the that was like the one that really did it. And Florida, you you make plays like that in Florida State, Miami, and obviously the freshman quarterback Emory was in there, right? So just talk about that game as a whole and kind of stepping up in the big opportunity in the big moment like that. I mean, is that something that's always that's always been in you? I feel like that game it was kind of personal because like. I didn't like the year before that we got blown out. So it was like, we, I can't, I was like, I won't go out like that again. So it was like, we're at Florida State. We got like, we got a team. We got to just, we got to do it all, put, give it our all. And that's what I did. Listen, football, obviously, it's a business, it's a lot of work. But as far as the passion for it and, and what you love about the game itself, what's your favorite thing about playing football? My favorite thing about playing football is being able to, like, win with your team and, like, being able to, like, enjoy winning. Basically, yeah. I, I want to ask you, too, a couple more questions here before we let you go, Jacoby. We asked you about the quarterback room, the receiver room, right? Obviously, you're, you're a vet now. Um, which which might be a little weird for you to think, right? Because you were the young guy for for a few years there. Yeah. But now you're the vet, right? It's a very talented room. Also, X coming back as as another vet there. Um, but the young guys in there. I mean, what's it like seeing them? We we keep hearing they're they've been awesome in practice and spring practice so far. So just talk about that room as a whole and and how you think it's coming together. I feel like all the young guys. They move like they're not young guys. Like they're already taking a lot of snaps and already like being able to like like with the amount of snaps that they're taking, it's like it's okay to them. Like they're not tired. They're not like they're just moving well and just learning the playbook as fast as they did. I feel like it's good. And it's it's more than just when you say move like. There's a lot of guys who are fast, right? But yeah, it seems like they're picking things up and like they're where they're supposed to be. Right? Yeah, basically. Listen, our, our guy Steve O always comes on the show and he's talking about Broward receivers over date receivers. You being a Broward receiver, you got act. <laughs> a lot of Broward receivers coming up making plays at college and the pros. So, what's your take on that whole thing, Broward receivers versus date receivers? You gotta go with the Broward receivers. You got to. <laughs> Oh, this is this is gonna this is gonna uh, cause a cause a stir. I'm sure <laughs> you know how social media is. Yeah. But uh, you know, Jacoby, it's been it's been great talking to you today. One thing we always ask guys before we before we let them go is music they're listening to. You know, before games, get them in that mindset. What's what's on the what's on the playlist? I listen to FCG Heem, Lil Boosie. Okay. That's one of the good songs that just came out. I like to listen to before practice. Okay, there you go. I saw you. I saw you. Uh, you, you were with him on on Instagram too. I know he's a Broward guy, so yeah. We NIL man, eat. NIL. It's a it's a great thing. You, you know, you're able to keep building that brand, man. So, thank you, Jacoby, once again for joining us today. Kane's connection. If Kane's fans sign up. You can support the awesome athletes at University of Miami, just like. Jacoby. So appreciate your time today, man. And uh, go Canes. Appreciate y'all.